Hey everybody, Andy Waddell with Form Films and welcome to Grade in 10. Today I'm going to be coloring and grading a shot from a student film written and directed by my son Ethan. So let's dive in. All right, here is our shot. What you see in the, the frame is Ethan in the center, his friends aligned in two rows, and the shot's going to begin back here in a close-up then slowly handheld, walk it back. Very emotional, uh, very, very cool shot. So normally I'm gonna work in YRGB color managed because I like the way the color science brings things to my output, which in this case is Rec. 709. However, I do not want to crush the blacks this much in the end result. So what I'm gonna do instead is pull it back to standard YRGB and I'm gonna manually bring it to where I want so I can get some creamy blacks without undoing what the color science does. A uh, little different workflow for me than normal, but uh, we're gonna go in and uh, let's get her done. All right, first up, we need to denoise. We have some splotchy in the grays. It's nothing terrible or unmanageable, but we are gonna do some work. We're gonna lean into this a little harder than I might normally, but it's gonna come out just fine in the end. Okay, so let's play with basic, I'll call it exposure on this node. I'm gonna work with the blacks and a little bit on bringing out exposure on him. But there's gonna be a little bit of back and forth here, I can tell. First of all, I'm just gonna get the top end of this kind of midway on my scopes. Maybe too much. I want to keep it moody, but not too moody. Okay, something like that. I want the blacks sitting well above zero. I want to keep this feeling smooth in the, in the shadows, and a bit lifted more so than normal, just for the style. All right, let's go to primaries. I'm just gonna do some very subtle primary work here. I really just wanna get a touch of that red out, cool it off just a little bit right in there. I mean, it's subtle. Look at that, look at that, barely touching these down here. Okay, now I'm going to have another node dedicated just to saturation. I'm gonna pop it up to about 80. I'm gonna jump down to the end of my uh, node tree. I'm gonna drop on sharp. It's gonna go ahead and back this down to about 0.46. And come back up to saturation and I'm gonna make a parallel node set up for skin tone and sweatshirt. Okay. At the end of the shot, he barely fills the frame. So what I'm gonna do is come about halfway up in terms of framing. And I want to grab with my 3D qualifier the key lit part of his skin. I just want to isolate it and work with it a little bit. Let me flip to vector scope. It is barely registering right here on scopes because it is so faint, but I'm gonna drop the color compressor on it. We are gonna go ahead and squeeze his skin tone to be a little more unified in saturation and hue. Then I'm gonna use my offset wheel just to pull it back. You can see it peeking out now right there. Use offset just to pull it back a little bit, just very ever so slightly. Off on. There we go. You can really see he's got a little greenness to him. Now without that, pulls it back, looks much cleaner. Okay. On the sweatshirt, it's light gray, but what I want to do is make it a little more than light gray. I want to pop it out a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna slide down here later in the shot so I can see the whole thing. really draw the eye to him 
by popping this and I'm gonna desaturate it. Take it down to about 15%. Love that. Off, on, off, on, you can see the difference. And then I'm just gonna go back to braid. Gonna pop it up just a touch, make it feel a little more alive. Okay, for kicks, why not do this too? I don't remember if I did this when I originally graded this shot, but let's go for the jeans. Because at least in this medium framing, the jeans, oh, it's gonna be a ton of bleed. Maybe I'll just keep it to the really well lit parts. This is experimentation right here. If you ever wonder, this is why my thumbnails look different than my final result because I never do it quite perfectly exactly the same. All right, so what I'd love to do here is just bump up some saturation. And I'm just gonna go to the blues on the curves. Just punch it up a little bit, make it a little bluer. So now off, on. Oh yeah, just a little bit of color right there. It's really nice. Okay, I'm gonna come to, let's see. I'm just gonna go ahead and is my node okay i'm gonna make a node after all this called adjustments i might should have put this in front i just want to pull this green and the shadows down just a little bit and tighten that up ever so slightly and then i'm going to do the same thing for blue Liking that. Now I'm gonna slide down the line. Well, I'm gonna come back up to the top. Okay, he looks really good. Saving this before issues. I'll pull back my noise reduction just a little bit. Okay, so let's go from adjustment. I'm gonna drop something I don't do a lot, but in a shot like this that's so predominantly you know, either dark or light, I'm going to do a black and white desat. So I'm gonna come over here to my loom versus sat, and I'm just gonna set some anchors and then just desaturate everything above that anchor and below that anchor. And if I pull this up, you can see what it's doing. It's just really sucking the color out of everything. I really only wanna get the bottom mist of the bottom end. And what that does is just makes the, the, the true dark grays that you see spiked here and just maybe whatever this little peak is right there of black, it's just gonna completely desaturate it to make sure it's pure gray, charcoal gray, or as Lego Batman says, really, really, really dark gray. Um, okay, now I'm gonna make one more curves adjustments and this is just kind of to take everything that's summed together and I'm gonna actually down just a touch right there okay like that really really big in this um, my adjustments i'm actually gonna pull a little more red just a touch of red out of that okay just a skosh there we go okay i'm gonna add a vignette in this case i kind of want to hide this stuff and this is in the black box uh theater at their school i kind of want to hide some of this just a little bit um it's a moving shot, not gonna worry about tracking, and just wanna just wanna pop on some vignette. So I'm gonna take soften all the way down. So I can see what the heck I'm doing. I'm gonna round it out a little. Take it up. And then I just want to get inside. I don't want to cut the kid off on the left. Okay, I'm gonna soften it out. Pretty much, pretty much full soft. And then I'm gonna pull back blend and put about 75%. Okay, so let's see. Uh, off, on. Yeah, maybe, yeah. I go back up to 90, about 90%. 90 ah, every time I click on that. Okay, about 90 on blend. Yeah, I like that. That just pulls your eye in a little more. Really digging the yellow and red down here on the shoes. Wish I had a little light kicking on that. That would have been super cool. Um, okay, in front of vignette, I'm gonna drop 
a lab effect node here. I'm gonna put this node itself in the lab CIE color space. And then all I'm gonna do is drop shadows right here to about negative five. Whoop, too much. I knew it would be sensitive. Let's do like a negative 2.5. Okay, now I'm gonna turn that off. So on, off, all it's doing is just ever so slightly cooling my shadows, just ever so slightly. Okay, so let's slide back toward the top. Love it, okay. In front of Sharp, uh, actually, sorry, in front of Denoise, I was gonna, ah, I can't even talk. After Denoise, in front of Exposure, I'm gonna add a little film grain. Let's put some film grain on it, children. I'm gonna go 16 mil. Archival. Oh, I really like how that sits on his cheeks. I love how that sits right there. It feels really good right there. Love that. Oh man, super pumped. Okay, um, what was the last thing I was gonna do? Oh, this is cool. Let's go back to edit. So we're going to drop an adjustment layer. ADJ, there we go, toolbox adjustment clip. Okay, we're gonna drop an adjustment clip on top of this entire thing. And the reason being, we're going to make the image go from black and white to color. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, I'm actually gonna go over here and grab a black and white LUT that I've got. You can do this a lot of ways. Clearly you could just desat, but for kicks, I'm gonna grab a black and white LUT. And play with that. So again, multiple ways to do that. I like the way some of these LUTs do the conversion. That looks amazing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is come back to my edit and I'm gonna wait until the, the shot starts moving. in the front of this just a little bit. Okay, so he's talking and then the shot starts moving. And so what I'm gonna do here is simply keyframe capacity and then come down to right about here, keyframe it down to zero. And then I'm just gonna select those. Oops, put a little bit of an ease in and an ease out. Now, if I scrub through it, you can see as it starts pulling away, his genes start coming to life, and all his friends come to life. And the shot lands right there. Now I can come back in here and I can play with the blend of this black and white, or how much I'm using of it. I could drop it like 0.8, it'd be 0.95, so it's all but perfectly black and white. And then as I'm sliding back, I'm going to feel in color. Okay. All right, that's it. I mean, look how cool that is. It's got this nice milky, creamy blacks and, and this muted color, but he's just popping right in the middle as he's delivering this soliloquy. It's going to be a really powerful piece. I'm super excited about it. Super proud of him. So please give us the likes, the follows, the LinkedIn's, the Facebook's, the tweeters, the Insta's, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks a lot. Have a great one. Until next time. Peace.